First we will create a curved ramp on the curved face between the lower and middle levels of the skate park. Using the arc tool, we will match the curve of the edge and use the push pull tool, loft surface tool, and stitch and trim command to create the slope of the ramp. Let's start by creating a new class for the ramps. Name the class Ramps and make it the active class. Switch to a top plan view and center the drawing over the curved face. Activate the Arc tool and enable the three points mode. Click once on the upper edge of the curved face to start the arc. Move along the edge and click a second time further down the edge to set a point for the arc to pass through. Click one last time further down along the edge to end the arc. Now activate the Offset tool and click on the Offset Tool Preferences button in the toolbar. Set the method to Offset by Point and Duplication to Duplicate and Offset. Check the Close Open Curves option and click OK. Click once to the left of the arc, move the cursor until it intersects the lower edge of the curved face. Click once more to complete the operation. Press the X key twice to deselect the closed polyline. Select the original arc again. Switch back to the Offset tool and click to the right of the arc. Move your cursor to the right, tap into the floating data bar, set the distance to negative 0.75, and press Enter or Return twice to create the polyline. With the polyline on the right still selected, go to Model, Extrude and set the extrusion to 1. In the Object Info palette, set the bot Z to 1.5. Repeat this process for the polygon on the left. Switch to a left isometric view. Press the B key to activate the X-ray select mode and select the original arc we created. With the arc selected, go to Modify, Move, Move 3D. Set the Z offset to 2.5 and click OK. The arc is now on the top surface of the extrudes. Activate the push pull tool and enable the move face mode. Move your cursor over the large extrude, press the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac to select the bottom face of the extrude. When the bottom face highlights in red, click once. Move the cursor down and snap to the bottom edge of the curved face. Click once to extend the face of the extrude. Activate the Arc tool and enable the Tangent to Line mode. Select Automatic from the Plane menu in the View bar. Move your cursor over the right side face of the larger extrude. It will highlight in blue. Click once on the top right corner of the face to start the arc. Move your cursor to the center of the face and acquire a smart point. Press and hold the B key to activate the X-ray select mode. Move the cursor to the right along the red extension line until you intersect the right edge of the extrude. After a few seconds, a second smart point will appear. Move the cursor to the midpoint indicator between these two smart points. Click once to set the tangent line. Move the cursor to the bottom left corner of the face and click once more to create the arc. Now we need to convert these arcs to NURBS curves, so we can use the Loft Surface tool to create a curved NURBS surface. Select this arc and the original arc we created. Go to Modify, Convert, Convert to NURBS. The NURBS curves are placed in a group. Go to Modify, Ungroup to ungroup the curves. Activate the Loft Surface tool in the 3D Modeling toolset and enable the second mode, One Rail Mode. This mode allows you to select a single rail and profiles. Move the cursor over the upper NURBS curve. Click once to set it as the rail. Now move the cursor over the other NURBS curve and click once to set it as the profile. Click the green checkmark button. The Loft Creation dialog will appear. Click OK to accept the defaults and create the NURBS surface. Select both the large extrude and the NURBS surface. 
Go to Model, 3D Power Pack, Stitch and Trim Surfaces. The Stitch and Trim Surfaces command created two generic solids from the extrude, using the NURB surface to separate the two objects. Select the upper generic solid and press the Delete key to remove it. We now have a curved face for the ramp. Select the curved generic solid and the remaining extrude. Go to Model, Add Solids to combine the objects and complete the ramp. Finally, let's give the ramp a gray fill color. Using the same techniques covered earlier, we will now create an elevated obstacle. We will use the rectangle, automatic working plane, extract, offset, and push-pull tools to create this obstacle. Center the view to the left of the long rail on the middle level of the skate park. Activate the rectangle tool and enable the center to corner mode. We want to center the obstacle across from the long rail. Move the cursor over the base of the middle post of the long rail. Use the X-ray select mode to acquire a smart point at the center of the base. Note, if you accidentally set a smart point in the wrong location, pressing the Escape key once will remove all smart points. Move the cursor to the left along the extension line from the smart point. Click once to start the rectangle. Move the cursor out. Tab into the floating data bar. Set the delta x to 2.25 and the delta y to 0.25 and press enter or return twice to place the rectangle. Without clicking, move the cursor over the rectangle and use the automatic push slash pull mode to extrude the rectangle. Set the distance to 0.75. We now have a base for the obstacle. Next, we will use the Extract tool in the 3D Modeling toolset to extract a 2D planar object from the top face of the base. This will be the top platform of the obstacle. Activate the Extract tool. In the toolbar, enable the Extract Surface mode and click on the Extract Tool Preferences button. Check the option for Create Planar Objects. This setting will create a 2D polygon instead of a NURB surface. Make sure all other options are unchecked and click OK. Move the cursor over the top of the base. When it highlights in red, click once to select the surface. Click the green checkmark button to extract the polygon from the surface. Now, activate the Offset tool, enable the Offset by Distance and Offset Original Object modes, and set the distance to 0.075. Click outside of the extruded polygon to offset it. Now activate the push-pull tool and enable the first mode, extrude face mode. Move the cursor over the offset polygon. Click once to select the face. Tab into the floating data bar. Set the distance to 0.1 and press enter or return twice to extrude the polygon. Finally, using the attributes palette, Give the base a turquoise fill color and the top platform a gray fill color. 